This is the brand new MacBook Air 15 with M3. And this was kind of tough to review because the differences compared to the previous model are very, very minor. Like, don't get me wrong, the M3 processor is now available in a MacBook Air. You have an updated Wi-Fi chip. It's now Wi-Fi 6E compared to Wi-Fi 6. But everything else about this 15-inch Air is identical to the previous model. The weight's the same, the dimension's the same, the thickness is the same, even the port placement is the same. You still get two Thunderbolt ports on the left-hand side, your MagSafe connector, and then on the right-hand side, you have your audio jack. The difference though comes down to the color selection. This new midnight color, which they've had on a previous MacBook, is a little bit more fingerprint resistant. The anodization process they're using allows fingerprints to show up less. Now look, fingerprints will still show up. Don't think this is gonna block them for good. Like I'm touching it right now and you can see them forming. It's definitely better than the previous midnight MacBooks we've seen, but it's still a dark color. It doesn't matter what you do to it, it's going to show fingerprints. That's the way dark colored laptops work. But look, I'm fine with that. I'm used to that. I would rather have this color than the rest. I think it looks very different. I like the way the light shines off of it. Sometimes if you put it to the left or right, it kind of looks black, but most of the time you have this very unique navy blue. The other change with the M3 MacBook Air 15 is you can now have two monitors connected to it at the exact same time. But there's a catch. The laptop has to be completely closed. As soon as you open it up, one of those monitors stop working, which means if you have the laptop closed, you need an external mouse and keyboard in order to use it. Because if the display is closed, you no longer have access to the keyboard that's on your laptop. Now I did try this with the MacBook Pro 14 using the two Type-C ports. It did not work. I've also tried it on the MacBook Air 15 with M2. It doesn't work on this either. I don't know if Apple's gonna be releasing a software update for those laptops, but it officially works with the M3. The other benefit of moving up to the MacBook Air 15 is you do get better speakers compared to the MacBook Air 13. Now, are they better than the MacBook Pro 14? I'm gonna play a test and you guys let me know in the comment section down below. Now, one of you guys asked me on one of my shorts on whether or not the display has been upgraded to mini LED. No, it's the same IPS panel that you'd find on any MacBook Air 13 or 15 inch model. Like, look, this is a good IPS display. There's nothing wrong with it. I get it. Some of you want OLED, some of you want mini LED, but IPS will just last you a lot longer than OLED. You're not going to get any burn-in. If you truly want mini LED, then you can move up to the Pro model. Now the base model of the MacBook Air 15 M3 costs $12.99, but it only gets you eight gigabytes of RAM, which by my standards for 2024 is absolutely ridiculous. Like I cannot think of any laptop for that price point that only gives you eight gigabytes of RAM. It just seems way too low for today's standards. Personally, I think the model I have here with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage is the real base model, but that's gonna cost you $16.99. $400 more. Now, if you are considering this laptop, the M3 is a great performer. Single core clock speeds are much faster compared to the M2 and M1, and multi-core speeds are faster as well, but not as drastic compared to single core clock speeds. But here's the thing, when it comes to real world use, the difference between the MacBook Pro 14 M3 and the Air 15 M3 is not super drastic. Like if you're talking about Premiere Pro or video editing in general, the Pro 14 is obviously the better choice. Like if you're doing anything that's long-term and gonna be pushing the system for a very long time, having that active cooling is definitely beneficial. Mozilla Firefox compiling code was very similar between the M3 and this laptop and the Pro 14. The only area where the Air 15 really came out on number one was with Photoshop. And I don't understand why, because everything else is similar compared to the Pro 14 minus the cooling system. The only thing I could think of was the SSD speeds. The SSD inside of here seems to be about 200 megabytes faster in terms of write speeds compared to the SSD that's inside the Pro 14. So that was very interesting. 
Now, Apple is really pushing gaming on their MacBooks, and they should. I mean, their GPU cores are quite powerful, but the problem is there's still not a lot of titles available for the MacBook. There's a lot of older ones like Death Stranding or even newer like Baldur's Gate, but playing Baldur's Gate on an M3 requires you to significantly reduce the resolution and obviously the visual quality. It's doable, but it's a much better experience on a more expensive M3 Max. Now look, if games like Overwatch and Apex Legends and Warzone were available for this, it could totally handle it. But that's the issue. Those games are not. And most of the AAA titles are still only on Xbox and PlayStation and PC. So Apple somehow has to convince developers to port their games over to this. But it's a tough call because the price point of these machines are significantly higher than a typical gaming console. Now, the other benefit of going with the MacBook Air 15 is no fan noise. It's just a very quiet computer. Like during these tests under load, the fans were blazing on the MacBook Pro 14. They were obviously audible, whereas on this, this guy, they're not. Now here's the thing, which MacBook Air should you buy? And I honestly feel the MacBook Air 15 is in a really weird place because if you're looking at this, you're probably looking at 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is gonna cost you $1699. But the thing is for $100 more, you can get the exact same specs, but a MacBook Pro 14, which means you get better speakers, you get way better display, and you get more ports. And I think that's worth $100 more. Now, if you don't do a lot of GPU related tasks, I honestly feel like the MacBook Air 13 with M2 for $13.99 or $9.99 is the best option. But if you do want the M3, obviously the MacBook Air 13 is gonna give you the best bang for your buck since you're paying about $200 less. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.